Good afternoon, good morning, welcome to Sunday's edition of A Lovely Craft Along and welcome to the final weekend show of 2022. Can you believe it? The next time you watch us over the weekend is going to be 2023. That is, of course, uh, some brand new live shows on Crafters TV. But let's not worry about that. We've still got up till Friday where we're going to be here live with lots and lots of ideas, demonstrations and deals as well. Talking about deals, if you head across onto our website, we have got our winter sale where you're going to be saving up to 70% off when it comes to the card, there's dies, there's stamps, there's applique dies, there's stamping dies, there's folders, there's a huge big selection when it comes to the winter sale. So you'll go in and onto our website, you can then go in a drop down or just click on on the home screen where it says winter sale. You've got different options, you've got six in total, however what I would recommend and what I've done myself is just go to shop all sale. That means that every single item that is part of that up to 70% off winter sale is going to be in there. So you've got your edgeable sentiments, brush lettering, you've got then your uh, scene stamp building stamps, you've got your sentiment Christmas stamps, you've got little ornaments, you've got frames, you've got floral frame stamps. As I said before, you've got your create a card. There is just loads and loads and loads that are part of that up to 70% sale. So that's how I would say that's definitely going to be the best one. If you do just want to have a look at dies, then you can go into the die section, but the best one will definitely be the shop, the sale. What I would also say as well, so that is running up until the 2nd of January or while stocks last, today's going to be a good day to have a look because up till midnight tonight, your time, you're going to get double points on all of your orders. So whatever you purchase, whether it's just one or two things, whether it's 10 or 20 things, you're going to get double points when it comes to your Club Inspire. So you're maybe going to have a look and see if you're going to stock up on a few items. Maybe it is going to be a selection of uh, actual collections. Maybe it's just bits and pieces to actually bump up your points when it comes to Club Inspire. So up till midnight your time, you're going to be able to benefit from double points when it comes to Club Inspire. So that goes Cross the board on crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. That is the place you need to go. But today, however, and this show specifically, is all about a craft along. Now, we've seen her all day yesterday. She was here with me this morning. She's here with me in a minute. She's here with me on the final show of 2022. She's here with me on the final show or the start of the year show on 2023. It's the one, the only. Corinne's back. I Hi, Corinne. am. They can't get rid of us. No, me not at all. We're here all the time. I think everybody else has gone off for Christmas. And, and we're still here. We're still here. So it's just us. There we go. Right. Now. Now, this is our craft along and it's all about the shaker tag so I've got a shaker tag on the front there and I've got a couple of shaker tags in there but I thought well we could make the shaker tags in five minutes so let's make a gorgeous card so I went on to that well-known resource site that we all go get all our ideas from and I managed to see this which is called let me get the name right it's called a double concertina interlocking card beautiful there you go so just something a little bit different and I'm going to show you how to make this look at this we can even hide all of the working so we're going to show you how to make that and then we'll put some shaker tags on the front but I thought we'd do it with uh say it with flowers because I absolutely love that collection but if you've not got it Wisteria, any of your paper pads are going to work with this. So whatever paper pads you've got, change the colours, do that. But please, please, please tag myself or myself and Craig in your makes after the show because we'd love to see what you're making. Absolutely, yeah. As it stands uh, when it comes to craft along, certainly with myself, you won't hear me jumping in quite a lot because I know all of you at home, including myself, want to see that incredible craft along. Because as I said to Corin yesterday, she's actually given us a double craft along because it's not just with the tags it's that concept as well however if you do need to ask any questions i know corn's always good and she'll always reiterate any things that she's just gone over but if you do just need to be oh what was that bit again we've got susie on the socials for this show so just drop a comment and a message and then at certain points throughout the craft along i will uh, put a little pause there and ask Corin any additional questions unless it's really really relevant to exactly what she's doing at that point then i would maybe just 
interrupter just quickly. But other than that, we're going to let you see how Corinne does her craft along. Get social. You've seen it along the bottom there, whether it's Facebook or, of course, whether it is YouTube. It's entirely up to yourself. Uh, we will, of course, need a shopping list, won't we? We're going to need the shopping list. So if we go into that bit, just to give you a head start, you may have seen it, of course, on social. Corinne, it's your craft along. Do you want to read it? I certainly shall. Just so everybody knows as well as that, I've just put up the um, how-to instructions. So it's got all the measurements in. Right, so do this. You're, obviously, you're going to need your Gemini shaker tags die set because it's all about the shaker tags. I have used the Dragonfly Dreams colourable, colourable creator card because I like the sentiments in there. From the Sara signature set with flowers, I use a happy birthday die and the 12 by 12 paper pad but I'm sure you can swap those around I've used my Centura pearl in lilac and baby pink use quite a bit of multi-purpose cardstock acetate obviously for those shakers and some purple twine as well then you're gonna I've used the Midas ink pad in rose satin just to do a bit of blending and stamp the sentiment with my alcohol proof noir black ink pad now rectangle nesting dies I'm just using some just some unbranded ones that I have got but you might have some in your collection so various different glues your all-purpose your tacky your foam pads or foam tape you're going to need all of those clearly you're going to need your Gemini die cutting machine because we've got a few dies in Included. I've used my Scoremaster scoreboard because some of the cardstock is quite large. Craft nice ruler and chunky glitter. Is that it? I think that was it. There we go. So it's not too much, but it's going to turn into a lovely card. So when we get started in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the card base first. Okay. But we have to do the mats and layers because, as you can see, I can't put the mats and layers on once I've constructed no. it. So it's going to be a little bit of cutting and a little bit of sticking to begin with. But we'll do we'll do that um, first. But if anybody is looking, I've already put it up on social media. Brilliant. The the instructions. I did actually miss want a couple off but I'll give you those when we come to it so okay. go and have a look at that and Craig's going to show us a few bits first before I am we start. Indeed. absolutely if you're one of the very 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 large number of uh, new viewers to us as of late craft along it's all about exactly that we take one product round about four to six weeks after it's launched and we do a craft along and we do the whole show on that one project so we literally are crafting along with you at home live however just like all of our shows you can go back and you can watch them time and time again and craft along at your own leisure it does mean that it's not going to be live however what it also does mean is you can then go and then you can then craft along whenever you want. You can pause, you can rewind, you can uh, go louder, you can go quieter. It's entirely up to you. Some people love to craft along live, then craft along again later. Some love to watch what Corin's doing live, then come back and craft along. It's entirely up to you. But what that means is if you've not got the product originally when it first launched, you can get your hands on it today and then craft along once you've got it at home, which these are the shaker tags with your metal dies in total. So this is what you're going to be getting. And first and foremost, you will think quite generic shapes that I'll be able to use as standard, but these are going to create your shaker tags. So you're going to get all of these ones here. You're then going to pay $14.99 or $16.95. So that's giving them all of everything that you see here. So yes, think of your shakers, but think of your generic matte and layer dies that you could be using them for. But if you are platinum, that's going to come down to £11.99 or $13.56. Whereas uh, you can see that's how they're going to come in the packaging. You've got your 30 dies in total. And that's just a smidge of the few items that you can then be making when you actually get your cards and projects at home. So they are across on the website, whether it's .co.uk.com.eu, that's where you need to go. £11.99 platinum price, $13.56 for you guys stateside. We'll say a very quick hello to those that are already jumping in, ready to go. We've got Erica saying good morning. Jill is saying hello from North Yorkshire. We've got Charlotte saying afternoon from Heron Bay. We've got Mary Beth is saying hi everyone from a cold Minnesota. Evelyn saying good morning from a beautiful Colorado. I bet you it's beautiful. I can imagine. Stephen is saying love your jumper, Craig. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very, very festive one. It's a good one. I like it. It is a nice cosy one. Not always great when you're in the studio, but hey, it's 
Christmas. We can deal with that. Alison saying, good morning, everyone from Brooklyn, New York. Love to go there, but you guys know that. And we've got Lillian saying hello from an ice cold and rainy London. And last but by no means least, Alicia saying good morning and greetings from Arkansas. Greetings to you. So as I said, very briefly as well, any questions, if you need a recap with anything, let Susie and myself know. We'll fire it across uh, to Corinne, but every now and again, we'll have a little bit of a break for you to catch up. So, Corinne, mm -hmm. I'm not going to interrupt too much. Okay. I am going to throw it over to you to start the craft along. OK, right. OK, so first of all, we're going to make the card base. Just to show you, I'm trying to work out, I don't think this would fit in an A3 sheet. So what we're going to do, as you can see on here, we're going to make, we're going to have one half of the concertina out of one sheet of A4 and the other half out of another sheet of A4. So you're going to get it and we're going to stick them together in due course. So let's start making those bits first. So multi-purpose cardstock, really easy to get hold of. And I'm going to cut that to 10 in oops, let me just lift the arm up properly 10 inches long so if you've got our trimmer that's going to work perfectly i've got it to 10 inches there hold that down and then we're just going to trim to there now the height of this card is seven inches high so it's basically it's a five by seven when okay. it's folded yeah. up so i thought people can get envelopes and things because it does fold nice and flat or you know you can um you can make your own if you want to so seven inches and we're going to take that one to there. So that's my five inch, um, my seven by 10. And then I'm going to do another one that's very similar, but I'm just going to give it an extra half an inch. So I'm going to do this one 10 and a half by seven. Okay. And cut that. And that's going to give me the little flap so that I can put them together. Ah, if that right. makes it there. So put that one by seven so i'm just going to jump out of that we're going to do some more white cutting in just one minute but let's just grab my scoreboard and we can pop that on there now i've got myself a bone fold score tool can't see it right so all i'm going to do oh, that's my centimeter side so on the first one i'm just going to score let me see which one this one this is the 10 let's do the 10 inch one first there we go 10 inch one i'm going to score at five inches there we go Score it to there. Let's go down with the larger one and then the smaller one because it just stretches those fibres. Fold it over, use the edge of my scoreboard and score it. So that's going to be the size of my mm -hmm. card when we finish. Now this one, if you remember, was ten and a half. Mm -hmm. So I'm still going to score it at five. There we go, my five inch. Always using the numbering on the right and the left hand side because that's your true measurement oh, yeah yeah yep so score at five and then score at ten and can you see i've just got right, that yeah. half inch piece let's just do that and that i'm just going to fold that over just to there make sure it's nice and square burnish that one and burnish that one so now if we look at the card let me just actually fold it back that way you can see what's going to happen is that's going to attach to there there you go can I you see, see yeah. just with that little half inch piece there but we're not going to stick those together just yet because we're going to do some die cutting so put those to one side let's just do the rest of our um paper trimming so it's going to take just a few minutes but that's okay. really simple so you just wanted effectively two five by seven cards and one of them's got a half inch lip so the rest of our white we need now you the piece in the middle can be any size you want so i haven't taken a set one for this i've just taken what i could get so i worked out that my a4 card if you use an a4 is just about 11 and a half inches so i'm just going to neaten that up to mm -hmm. exactly 11 and a half so it's literally going to take a whisper off take that off so i mean that's just taken that oh, much yeah, off it has. it's really a little bit but actually it was just easier because if i got a round number i didn't yeah. want 11 and a half and a tiny little that's bit it. and then i'm going to cut that i've only got one piece there yeah i'm going to cut that to four inches wide and that's going to be the piece that goes through the middle Make sure that's there. There we go. And that's going to be my middle piece. Then I can't quite get it out of there, but I will be using that. Okay. And what I also want is two pieces that are four and a half by six and a half. Now, that, as we know, 
is 11 and a half. So I can't get two six and a halves that way. No. If I trim it to six and a half first, six and a half inches. I'm all about maximising your cardstock. Took the words right out of my mouth there, yeah. So if I trim that to six and a half first, I can get two four and a halves out of it that way. Yeah. I'm always looking and working out how can I get the most out of my cardstock. There we go. Now, I just made a little bit of mess up. So you notice I always do that. I always flip over my cardstock when you I put do. it in, just so that I'm, I'm only ever, if I can help it, I've only got one cut edge. So that's my two, yeah, two the same size. And then the other thing I want is two pieces of three and a quarter by three and a half. And they're just going to be some panels. And actually, I can get it out of this piece. So if I go three and a half on here, and then I can get two three and a quarters out of there. So three and a quarter is... Have I got it the right one? Yeah, there it is. I love this because on the scoreboard, you've got these lines at every quarter of an inch, haven't you? So you can see that everything is nice and straight. So that's three, and the next one along is a quarter. So there's no difficulty. So just to show you, what we've got now is we've got our two pieces. And was that my... Sorry, I've put it down, so I'm just checking that that was the right one. What did I want? Just checking. Four, is that my four inch? No, that can't be. Where have I put it down? I put it down somewhere, now I can't see it. That must have been it. I wanted A4, scored at four, uh, cut at four. I'm going to trim that again, because I think I might have put it down and I can't see it. Let's trim that, there we go. Four, there we go. Right, OK. So we've got our card base and we've got our mats and layers. I'm losing everything. There we go. Got our mats and layers. Gordon, can oh. I just quickly mm. jump in and just you let can. you know the shaker tag dies have sold out. Wow. They've sold out. We didn't have big quantities anyway. We thought we might have enough. It has, unfortunately, it's sold out. That's probably one of the quickest, I know not big stocks, but quickest sell out I've seen within a craft launch. So it's just to let you know that, um, but it'll still be lovely to see what corn. Oh, yeah, there's lots of stock. people at home that have got them, isn't yeah, there? So definitely. hopefully the people at home can still craft along. And they can still make this card shape and decorate could. it differently. Definitely. So there's still a lot of scope with this. OK, so this piece that's 11 inches, um, 11 and a half inches, what we're going to do is we're going to score half an inch here now all of these measurements are already on my social media page so go mm -hmm. and have a look then I'm going to score at two so half an inch and then two and then five and three quarters there we go five and three quarters okay. then nine and a half and then 11 okay. and I'm just going to show you how this works so what you've got this will fold in half so we've got two panels just there, can you see, are oh, identical. Yeah, yeah. So those are four and three quarters, I believe. Then you've got two panels of one and a half and two uh, half inch panels. And if you look, that's the bit that's going to go through the middle. Can you remember? So that concertina. Yeah, yeah, you so can yeah, see where you, it's going. You see where it's yeah. going from. But again, that can be any measurements you want right. that's not fixed, so long as it does that, so that you've got a large piece in the middle, two little bits, and then a couple of little flaps that are going right, to fold down. Right, that's if you've got that, yeah. yeah. So that's all my white done, and I'm just going to cut now. We haven't got to score. I'm just going to cut my mats and layers. So all you need now is, you, as you can see, your mats and layers. So the first bit we're going to do is some purple. Now, you need quite a lot of this because I've got... Oh, let me show you. One, two, three, four, five layers right. with purple on. But let it take me a second. So they're all the same okay. at four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it to six and three quarters. Which is six and three quarters? Yes, it is. Can't see six and three quarters to there. I wouldn't. You could, you could layer up your cardstock, but then you've got to make sure it doesn't move. So, that's so the thing, I, isn't it? I wouldn't. So four and three quarters. Because if you remember, we're doing a five by seven card. That's right. Yeah. So we've gone down by quarter of an inch, just to show people it's really easy to remember. Four and three quarters is there. Now, keep these larger pieces. Because if you look, I can get the sentiment out of there. 
and I can also get some of my other little bits and pieces out of these. So don't go quickly jumping away. No. So that was two. Let's do the next two. So six and three quarters. I'm all for trying to get as much as you can out of your cardstock. Yeah, you're really good at that, um, showing us how to get we'll the really, most. And we'll really, really try and maximise this. I hope people are crafting along or just taking the concept, even if they're not crafting along, watching and thinking, oh, I can, I can do something like Definitely. this. Definitely. And let's do one more. There we go. So the next one is, we can do it this way around. Four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay. Now, on three of these, so the two outside panels and the one at the front, we've gone straight on the next layer with our pattern paper. Uh -huh. On the two inside ones, the next layer is a white layer, but we've already cut those. Remember, we cut those a few minutes ago, so we've got the That's next layer them. for those two. There we go, that's those. And then those are the, the front and the two inside, the front and the back, inside of the front and the back. So we've got those, so yeah, that's sorted there. We also need two pieces at three and a half by three and three quarters, and they're gonna be the mat layers just here. I thought I'd show you each time where we're cutting the mat layers. Yeah, it's good So that. just for that little bit in the front. So let's see if I've got a piece that's good enough. I shall do it from here. So this is, what did I just say? Three and a half by three and three quarters. So we can go three and three quarters from here. There we go. And we want two at three and a half. And this would look different but lovely whether you used mirror card or Ooh, shedless yeah. glitter card. Yeah. Have a look at the cardstock that you've got. Because maybe you're following along exactly as Corin's doing, but maybe you've not got quite the shade that Corin's using. It doesn't matter. No. You know what I mean? You'll get a lovely look whichever oh. shade or colour you do use. Exactly, exactly. Right, I'm going to use some of these scraps. So I need two pieces that are one and a half by three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut my... These are just scrap bits that we've got left over. So okay. one and a half there. Then let's do the other one to one and a half. Like I say, if you care, if you keep all your bits, you'll be able to really maximise how much you get out of these. So one and a half by three and three quarters. So think... these, these are going on the centre panels. That's what's good with a craft along as well. Not only do you show how to make said project yeah it's about showing you how you can maximize your cardstock as well yeah by ex turning or twisting exactly right and then we need for the front panel i need one that's six and three quarters because it's going to go on the front just by an inch wide these are a bit trickier to cut but again i can get them out of my waist there we go there we are i think that's not bad that's all the waste that is good. we've got left. Yeah. And I'm still going to keep that because I'm going to get my sentiment out of that. So that's not too bad at all. Let's see. Out of there. there. Ooh, nearly nearly trim that down. OK. Now, did I do those? I think I missed those. Those were those. No, I've got those. Yep, got all of those. Right. I thought I had missed some out. OK, so the next one we want is our Centura Pearl. And we only need two pieces of these, but you'll see why I've had to cut them all in the middle. Uh, first, sorry. So I'm going to cut these two pieces of Centura Pearl in the baby pink. And again, you pick your colour that you want. And these are going to be six and a quarter. There we go. To there. And that is by four and a quarter. OK. I love that tone you're using as well. Hmm? I love that tone that you're using yes. as well. I, all the Centura Pearl is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? it now, really again, is. you're going to get, out of this bit that's left over, you're going to get most of your shaker tags out of that, so make sure you keep that safe. So there. And then we are going to cut our... Um, pattern paper and like I said I have taken it from our um, gorgeous say it with flowers now one of the things I like to do is try to make sure that when you stick it down the pattern looks right right so this is the top 
this is the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to cut, because I'll need four of these, I want it's six and a half, because this is going to be the height of the card. So I want this to dangle down. So I'm going to go six and a half by four and a half. So I've got one there and another four and a half. There you go. So we've got that. Now, I can't get the other one out of there, but this one I can get out of this way, and it will still look right with this bit here. So if I do six and a half there by four and a half just there. So there you are. I've got three panels yeah. like that. And then the final little bit I wanted is, let's see if I can get it out of here. Oh, I'm not going to get it all out of there now. Can I? So not only are you maximising your cardstock, you're maximising the imagery on your pattern yep, papers. Yeah, exactly. So I might have to go on to another piece just to get. So what I need is two pieces that are three by th three by three and three qu three and a quarter. So if I go three and a quarter that way, and then by three, how can I get that out of? Oh, I can just about get that. So if Perfect. I go three and a quarter that way, there we go. That should just... I think that one is a smidgen smaller, but it'll be fine. I didn't want to cut into another piece no. of cardstock. Right, you'll be pleased to know that is, for now, all of the cutting done, because we've done a lot of cutting there. And I apologise if you haven't been able to keep up, but hopefully you can pause and watch. But there is a lot here. So we've got our pattern paper... We've got our pink paper, we've got quite a few bits of purple and our white and we've got our card base. So there is a lot there. So let's just have a pause mm -hmm. while everybody catches up. And if you have struggled, please go look on my social media and you'll see a sheet with everything on there. And then we'll start doing the construction of the card because the card base comes yeah. first. That's brilliant. Thank you for that, uh, Corin. What you'll see as well, certain things that Corin is used, and unfortunately the shaker tags have already sold out, but you'll see different items that Corin's using just popping up on the screen. Well, we'll go over it just shortly, but the papers, the Sate with Flowers, are on the website as well, so you can head across there and take advantage of your double points. But what you might also want to take advantage of is our favour boxes. These were super, super cool, super popular when they first launched, and we've still got some, but that is the favour box. So let's, let's just double check on the favour boxes. So we've got, let's have a look, because we've got a couple of different options here. right here. so... Let's go in. It's not these ones, although these are on the show. These are classed as favour box, but not them. So I believe it's going to be the ones with dies and also stencils, which I believe it's these ones. Right, here we go. So you've got ten elements in total here. You've got your ornate favour box and you've also got your country cottage box. Now, with these ones here, what you have got is you've got your template that you're going to draw around and then cut around. You can draw around it, scan it into your bladed cutting machines and then replace your scissors with the blade. You can do that if you want. What you've also got, you see two dies here. You do actually get four. So you've got four dies in total plus your template, which gives you five, and then times that again with your other one, that's giving you your 10. So it does mean with these, you can cut in or you can cut out with a matting layer if you so wish. But if you want to do that, instead of having to do it all four times or two times or three times, you do have the four dies and the four outline dies. We've just put one on so that you can see. But it is 10 elements in total, as I say, for all, all of that, that enables you to be making beautiful little boxes, favour boxes. It could be to weigh your helium balloons 
down if you want. Just tiny little treat boxes, whichever color card, whichever texture of card that you want. You're able to do that really easily with the template, but then you can then decorate them when it comes to the different mediums. So it doesn't necessarily just to have to be left with what's there in the collection. Use your own flowers, flower forming, your dyes, anything like that from past collections. So all of that, you're going to be paying £8.50, not for one of them, but for two of them, £8.50 or $9.98. Now, that does also mean that when it comes to your Club Inspire, you're going to be £6.80 or $7.98 for something that is incredibly versatile in the different ways that you can use them. On top of that, you're not going to get your standard points when it comes to Club Inspire. You're going to get your double points as well up till midnight your time. So it has something we've referenced over the last couple of days. Today, as I say, is the last opportunity to get your hands on the double points. So what we're going to do is select you, anyone that needs to catch up, although we seem to be all good, anyone that does need to catch up or those that want to know all about our Club Inspire, then here's the boss to tell you all about, well, our Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Here at Crafters TV, it couldn't be easier to get social with us. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, on your TV or tablet, you can get so close to the action, it's like you're in the studio with us. You can ask questions about products or crafty techniques. Get hints and tips from our expert demonstrators. Plus, share pictures of your crafty makes with our amazing community. Crafters TV, getting you closer to the crafty action. makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're they're um, really skilled at what they do and they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crafters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the products. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. The community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. What makes Crafters TV so special, 100%, is the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, oh, the people obviously, the people not just here at Crafts Companion, uh, but the viewers that watch us, I mean everybody. We have this real magical essence about it. Bye for now, bye.
Uh, yep, fun and games here on Crafters TV, that's for sure. We've got uh, Betty Weaver saying hello from Idaho. Cynthia saying good morning from Salt Lake City in Utah. We've got uh, K Royalty Crafts saying good morning from Killeen, Texas. Sharon Caper saying good morning from North Carolina. And to everyone on the CCTV team and family. Silva saying hi everyone from a cold and wet London. Rhonda saying good morning, Craig, Corin, Team Social, CCTV crew, and all my wonderful crafty friends. Crafting along from a very cold 16 Fahrenheit in Chicago. But wind chills make it feel like uh, two. Mm, bit cold. Uh, I gather that's cold. I don't do it in Fahrenheit, but I can gather it's cold. Um, Mary Reno saying good morning from Maine. And uh, Jill is saying, and many of you do this, sorry, not crafting along. I like to take my time and watch and do it later on. As we're saying with Corinne, many do do that. Uh, Evelyn is saying this is such a neat looking card. And Mary Beth, I actually did think of you. A couple of nights ago, Corin, on my lives that I do for my advent calendar, Mary Beth has said, I would love to see more 5 by 7 cards. Because it's Perfect. ones that uh, she does a lot, she knows many that do a lot. So there we go. Not only is it 5 by 7 but a lovely concept as well. Excellent. So it's a really, really Just good one. did it specially for Mary Beth? Just for Mary Beth. Uh, and incidentally, yes, I'll still be doing my uh, advent live tonight. It will be live, but I'll tell you that. Second Chance Sunday. Now, you will have seen not that long ago the score master popping up on the screen. Now, I know uh, uh, Corin's using the big score. Now, you would be able to use the score master if you wanted to. You might need to just juggle it about because it doesn't go quite as wide as the large scoreboard. However, what we have got for you is a score master for free. I know. For free? For free. Wow. What you're going to do is you're going to pay for not something that you're not going to use. You're going to pay for 120 luxury sheets of cardstock. In actual fact, it's just over 120. I'll tell you that in a moment. You're going to get your score master completely free. That's wow. nuts, isn't it? That's, uh, that is good. Absolutely nuts. Exactly the same form as what Corn's been showing you on the big score. It's just up to eight inches. You can go in the length of A3, of course, and you've got your inches, you've got your centimetres, and it's still a box maker as well, so you can make your boxes from that. Anyway, very, very briefly, you've got your 120 sheets of luxury cardstock. God, you've got colours. the purples, isn't it beautiful? They're gorgeous. So within each pack, you are going to be getting your 30 sheets, you're going to get shedless glitter, you're going to get a mat, and then you're also going to get the mirror as well. So that's in the purple, that's in the green, it is also in the gold, and it is also in the silver. Now it's actually just over 120 sheets. Because see these panels at the front? Mm -hmm. That's there just to show you the cardstock. So all the sheets, 120 sheets are A4 in size. These ones on the front, they're not included in the count. So you do actually get uh, a wee bit more. And that's the same for all of these. So you can still use them as mats and layers. This middle one here, that is a full sheet, so it's like three quarters of A4 and that's about half of A4 and that's the same for all of them. So $39.96 or $63.80. You've got a really nice little saving there, certainly when it comes to cardstock. Platinum comes down to $31.97 or of course for you guys stateside $51.04. If you do look at today's price, it's a saving of 25%. But it's not just the cardstock, you get your score master completely free. So certainly one to take advantage of, certainly on today, when you've got your double points up till midnight tonight. So we are all good. No questions or that mm -hmm. as such. So what we can then do, any other comments or that you want to feed through to Susie, fire them across. We will currently throw back to yourself, Corinne. Perfect. And if you need anything, just shout. OK, right. Now, I've just put everything into layers. And when you've cut everything out, you can see how it fits. So this panel that goes across the front, I'm actually going to glue all of my pieces on now. So this little tab doesn't have anything on. And then that side tab, I've just put one mat and layer on. I've not put lots of mats and layers on. I've just put one on there. If I trim that just slightly out on that one, 
just feels a little bit little bit big i'm just going to trim that down okay. I'm, i've maybe just measured it a little bit wrong on there oh it's got a little bit of glue let's see if i can get this trimmed just was a little bit little bit a uh, little bit big i'm just going to trim that one down there we go and then i'm going to trim the other one down just to make it a little bit oh, i've got glue on there now let's see if i can get that off just trim it down just as i put it on it's looking a little bit Little Sometimes bit snug. it's not until you go and put it on, I is know. it? And you think, oh, yeah, it's not I need quite a bit fitting. More. Now I'm using my Kalal glue here just because I love the effect that you get with Kalal glue. I love how rigid it makes everything. To me, it just adds an extra layer of strength in your card base, um, and that works for me. So um, I just like it to add on that extra strength. Now I know. Um, there's other other of the experts. I I did a card and they picked it up and they went, Oh, you've used Kalal glue. Oh, I never do that. I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. We all have our favourite mediums, whether that's um, uh, tape pens, mm -hmm. tacky glue, Kalal glue, or you know, another glue of your choice. It's you know, do you know what? Twelve eighteen months ago, I would have done all of this with finger lift tape. Yeah, you would have, yeah. Um, and then I got converted to wet glue. So, you know, it's just, it's just your choice. So then we're going to put the white layer in there. And I know I've just put Kalal onto my um, pearlescent, but if you're careful, it's fine. And That's this fair, one, yeah. now on the front, I'm going to use the pattern, but I just thought on, because we're going to put shaker tags on, I'm using the plainer side up on that, just because I don't, I thought, the pattern distracted from the shaker tags. Yeah. And that's why we do our papers double-sided. Yeah. Because it's brilliant. It means that from that one sheet, I've used all the bits and, you know, haven't had to worry at all about, you know, it, getting extra bits, but, you know, just making, using them all and then just making them work best for mm -hmm. me. But it's still pretty. Look at that. Look at all the detail on there. Look at really the flowers in there. That is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute. Okay. Everything on there is in place and that can now dry. And then, if you remember, I'm going to just bring in my card. We've got these cent these larger centre panels, these two here, yeah. which is where we've had to cut and mats and layers. Now, if you wanted to do this simply, you could just cut the same size aperture straight through the middle. But what I've done is I've done them so that you've got a frame. Can you see? You can see on here and on here. I've got the pink, then I can see a bit of the white, and then I can see the purple. Frame. Oh, let me bring it that way. There you are, you can see. And I like that effect. So to do that, it's really simple. What I'm going to do... I'm going to pop the tiniest little bit right in the centre. Oh, that was a solid tape pen. I wanted this, all right, that's fine. I just put a little bit of tape pen in the middle and then I'm going to pop my two pieces of card together. Just like that. And then just use that tape pen to hold them together. Now, I've got three size um, uh, dies there. Okay. And all I'm going to do is work through them. Where did my pokey tool go there's so much on here i've lost it i've got <laughs> another one Blends i'm the sure counter. i have it'll be it, oh i can see it now there it is try and keep just one out there we are. right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start from the top with the largest die and then i'm going to work my way down so you can see i've got double thickness of centura pearl here and i'm going to pop this in the middle and the reason i'm doing the two together is so that my apertures are in the, exactly the same place so even if you go off a little bit can you see i've just lifted that one up a little bit higher at least on both sides it'll be in the same place because i don't want yeah. one side to drop down because my my bar that goes across the middle won't fit oh right enough yeah it yeah won't, will it? so it doesn't matter if you're not very good at lining up by cutting the two together we are certain that if they're out they're out on both sides mm -hmm. So I think that looks pretty accurate. If you if you like to make sure it's absolutely exact, then go for it, measure it and everything. And because I've put that tape, use tape in the middle, the pressure of my machine isn't going to separate the two pieces. And that, you know, because I've done that before, you get so much pressure in your machine That's it, yeah. that they, they split. Well, they're not going to. So the next layer down we're going to do will be our white layer. 
and we can get those. Now, I only put that tape right in the very centre. So when these come out, if you can hear me over the machine, when these come out and I pop that through, look, no problem going through two layers, absolutely none whatsoever. No, no, it does not. I'm just going to just take, it's just holding that tape on there. There we go. Look, they're not stuck together because the tape was nice. just in the middle. And again, if you're careful and get these off, and I can, it's just taking off the back because I was going to use dotty tape pen, but I didn't. I've used the other one. There we go. I can still use those for some other bits, whether it's to make little shaker tag, the shaker tags, or whether it's to confetti or whatever. So I'm going to keep those just in case I need them. Now, this is where we go to the next day. So what I need to do is I'm going to use this one to work out where my next die goes. So we've used the largest. We're next going to go down to the second die. You always work from the top down. So I position that one where it needs to go. And then I put that die in the centre. There we go. I can use that same piece of tape. That's going to go there. And that's going to go there. Now, because we've cut the two of the pinks the same, we could effectively cut both of these together. So let's put a little piece of tape. I wasn't going to do those together, but I will now. Let's put those two together because everything is going to match because we've worked it all together. It is, isn't it? So let me just double check that is still straight, still matches. I actually think I'm just going to go... I'm just going to reposition that because I think it just moved very, very slightly. So as long as I put this in the right place, so there we go. That's going to be my matte and layer. Let's pop that one on there and then put that on and then put that. And you can see I'm only taping onto the waist. Well, I'm trying to get as much of the tape onto the waist as possible. Yeah, yeah. That way. I'm not marking the card that's going to be on my final project. Let's pop that through. And then we're going to do the next bit, and we're going to do, we have to do these separately. So we need to bring in our card base and also our purple layers. OK. And we're going to do those together. It's just about working through it is, them, it? And, it, and, it's, and it is very simple when you come to do it. There we go. Right, now, has that cut all the way through? If it hasn't cut all the way through, like I don't think this one's gone. Oh, it has. It had. It had. It just didn't look. There we go. Let's cut both of those. So we can pop that one. If I show you that look now, that is. Does it go that way up? If it hadn't, would you just run it through again? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. And I can guarantee this one, if I get it the right way around, look at that fits perfect so there we go right now we need to do the next layer so if we look at this this card is going to go like that so we're working on let me put a mark we're going to work on this one and this one there you go panels effectively panels two and three okay to work out where we need to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let's think this through so i'm going to do exactly the same again i'm going to Put a piece of tape in the centre and pop this one on. You could actually glue this one down, but then sometimes you've then got to go through the glue. Well, that's true, yeah. So bring in my white, which is going to be my matte layer. Bring in my smallest die and measure that. I will have to do these one side at a time because okay. I'm going through two layers on here. One and two. A little bit more complex, this craft long, but sometimes it's quite nice it's a, to it's do... It's a fun one. It's a nice one. ..to do something. So pop that onto my die-cutting plate, and I'm going to just do it that way so that the whole thing is through the machine. And we can go through there. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. Put a little piece of tape in the middle and put that in its final position. OK. There we go. Let's just grab that. That one went with that one. This one's going to go with this one, so I'm going to pop that in to there. And then you can see... And again, look, it's gone straight through. There 
there we go you can see on that now just pop it and it there we go pop it and it pops out there we are and we've got that one that goes on that side and then we want to do the same on this side so we put that on so mats and layers descending mats and layers aren't complicated no they just take a minute to think about and that's when you're doing it at home you're you're not going to be rushing you're taking your no. time and you know just enjoying that process Oops, i've just pulled that off but sometimes people are like well i don't know how to do it so if we don't do it on the craft along when we've got that little bit more time how will anyone know how will people know so if you've got any questions about how i did that sorry and don't lift it up like i just did when i caught it you know i just thought it was nice to because it's it's about the sort of techniques that people often ask exactly. us about yep they do and like you say it's great to cover them within the craft along exactly there we go and then lift that one off i take that off this one off just so that i'm not putting anything through my die cutting machine more than it needs to so there we go right and we're nearly ready to glue things down to start making that concept in the middle it comes together really really quickly i've got a die somewhere it does like you say once you've done the the cutting elements then you can just yeah. get into that creation can't you starting to form it yeah Oh, there we are. And that was my final one. Just pop that off, pop that onto the magnet. Ah, there's the other die. I was wondering where my other die had gone. And then put that one through. And there we have that as well. So I'm going to stick that one onto there. And then I'm going to stick those mats and layers onto here. And then I will stick that together so that's all i'm going to do next if you need to show anything i'm just going yeah. to literally stick those mats and layers together there we are right i'll get undo that perfect um what i wanted to say as well but i didn't want to jump in corin mm. where no. lillian was saying and i've just had a look the a3 big score is a bargain today the a3 it is on our website 30 percent off and here in the uk it's 13 pound 99 <gasps> Wow. Mm hmm Yeah. So if you are thinking, okay, the score master's great, or maybe you've got it and you've thought, oh, I love the one that Corn's used and I want to get that. Here in the UK it's thirteen pound ninety nine. Just you double check your website.com or dot EU, but it's in that winter sale. And it's an item that we use day in, day out. You wouldn't expect nope. core items like you that wouldn't. to go in the sale would you not at all. absolutely brilliant not at all but what we'll do is i'll just quickly show you this card bundle here because this is a great one it's 12 by 12 you're going to get a full pad completely free so what we have got in here is um now i am no carol vorderman and when I say that, you guys outside the UK, I do it as tongue in cheek, but she's a math wizard here in the UK, just like Corin is. I've calculated at 138 sheets, and we say 108. No, we've 30 sheets of card and 108 sheets of paper. That's 138. See, there you go. So it's not. <laughs> you, that's. That's told me, hasn't it? Um, she, yeah, not maths is my main issue. It's reading, reading. is my main issue, isn't it? Yeah. There it's all go. on the screen, Craig. It's all on the screen. Read what's on the screen, Craig. That's what you're here to do. Um, there you go, then. Let's read that properly. 12 by 12 card, paper selection, with 30 sheets of card and 108 sheets of paper that's going to give you 138 sheets when it comes to your 12 by 12. <laughs> so what you're going to get it is four 12 by 12 pads and you are you're going to be getting your frosted blues for free you're going to be They're getting nice. that one for free for oh. free just not that long launched did, oh, did that come? Oh, I know which one that came. Yes, with the sorbet and everything else, yeah, wasn't win, it? Yeah, we've got winter solstice, so that's one that you're going to be paying for. Oh, that'll for. go well with that blues, Red, won't it? it? Works beautifully together. So that you are getting for free, which is worth, uh, I did write it down, 16 is uh, worth. That's what it says on the screen, Craig, save 16 Oh, my gosh, <laughs> so it does. <laughs> 
I've not had any issues all weekend. You come at this one item. And here's me. Here's, he, here's me thinking I'm smug and I've got all my notes, I've got them all he written. Sat, do you know what? He sat with a calculator and he worked them all out, didn't you? I, I did was indeed. really impressed. I did indeed. And that wasn't my issue. I just can't lead and read the screen right, can I? <laughs> anyway, so, yes, it is. It is one of them's worth $16.99 or $19.95. So on today's price, for all of these, which you're getting your Frosted Blues for free, you are then going to be getting your Winter Solstice that you can see here. I mean... Oh, it's a lovely paper pad, is that? Phenomenal, isn't it? All double-sided as well. So if you love your fold backs, your tea bag folding, maybe you just want to chop them up Maybe you want to make a do, festive version. Do you know what those reverse sizes, the reverse sides rather, will go all year round. The not, there's there. nothing winter or Christmassy about them, is there? Not at all. Not at all. I think all. those would be good for mixed media. Start Perfect. adding your inks and your other materials to those. Perfect thought for that, yeah. Enhance what's already there. You are also going to be getting a winter's tail. No singing now, although I do want to sing. So once again, you have got your 12 by 12 double sided. And in actual fact, Corinne, yeah, there's a couple of these that you'd be able to use all yeah. throughout the year. No exactly. problem whatsoever. You can see all double sided. That's what you're going to be paying for. And maybe you want a little bit of bright sunshine smiliness. We're going to put in the gnomes as well. So with the gnome 12 by 12, you've got your little panels here that you can chop up into fours, and then that's giving you your four card blanks done or your scenes already done for you but then let's go in to the double-sided sheets that you can see here so all of that that you're going to be getting so it works out you're paying for that one you are paying for that one you are paying for that one but completely free if you read the screen like I should be doing you're getting that one for free which is $16.99 or $19.95 so it's a really really good deal on that today's price you are going to be paying $44.97 or $59.85 that's then going to give you your saving of course of 25% but as we know, if you're Club Inspire and your Platinum, it's going to come down to 35.98 or 47.88, and take advantage of your double points up till midnight tonight. It is across on the website. What we are going to do is we're going to give you a little bit of a break just to check out your baskets, because we can see from the world of technology, some of you are juggling, checking out, and following the craft along. So we'll be back just in a couple of minutes. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. So, join our family of craft experts with live tutorials and demonstrations every day. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products here on Crafters TV. Get creative and craft along with our amazing deals. Your next craft project is only a click away. Tune in live seven days a week or watch on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook or our YouTube channel. You can chat to us, craft along and meet new friends in our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. You all our time with each other! <laughs> You're not through to boot camp. Get off! <laughs> <laughs> There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. So, stop what you're doing and enjoy the fun here on Crafters TV. Everyone backstage is amazing. You probably know this because we talk about them all the time, but I have to give a big shout out to Jake. From the minute he walks in the door, he has got the hugest smile, but he's just brilliant. He's always there, he's always on the ball, asking what, and, and they all are, but Jake is just, he's a cheeky little chappy, I think is why I like him. Constantly asking if we've got everything we need, fetching it for us if we need them. Um, everyone laughs at me, because my main thing when Jake's in is, Jake! He gets me whatever I want, so if I need anything from the library, he goes, gets me it. We, we, you know, we rummage through the boxes together, we make sure that I've got everything I need. Um, and he always does it with a smile.
We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items that they've made. We talk about customers but really they go in as a customer, come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing, the messages I get are amazing. Me personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health, I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise, other people have got a completely different health issues, they understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air, I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family you seen Jake there and we've got Tracy in this weekend she's in up to I think she says our last day is Thursday before she yes. goes off for uh, the Christmas holidays as well. So still got a few days left of both of them. We'll see Jake before Christmas in the new year. Jackie on YouTube is saying good morning from a cold morning in Texas. Ooh. We've got Coletta is also saying good morning from a sunny but freezing Kansas. Mmm, Kansas. We've got uh, Mary Beth is saying thank you so very much, Craig and Corin, for the 5x7 card. Lillian was saying about the big scoreboard. Rhonda is saying, Craig, two degrees Fahrenheit is minus 16 <gasps> point 16? six. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, indeed. Wow, indeed. We had minus 10 this last week, and they reckon we'll have plus 12 to 16 next week. Crazy, That's crazy. difference, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely crazy. Yeah. There you go. I we love know. talking about the weather, don't we? Well, we do. <laughs> British. Talking about weather and cups of tea, that's what we love. Although we never moan about standing in queues. That's the one thing we don't do here in Britain. We'll just stand in queues and we just take it. We just take it. Uh, Jill on Facebook is saying, good tip, Corinne. That was about the mats and layers and that. You know, yep. Quite a few of the tips that you've said, uh, a lot of people are loving. Colette is saying, I'm saving this just for the mat and layer tips. Good. Uh, and then Shaz on Facebook is saying, good afternoon from a very wet Devon. Love craft alongside as I learn so much. We've got Martin and Lairn is something I worry about, not now. Uh, we just had a big shout out to Devon from George in our ear there. It was like, Devon. Uh, we have got, uh, Shaza, if you let us know where about in Devon, George would like to know and we'll feed that across. Is George from Devon then, I take it? George, are you from Devon? Yeah, he's originally from Devon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let us know. See, it's a bit like when I get excited when someone says they're from round about the Carnoustie area. Yeah. You know, the Angus area up in Scotland. So that's what When they it... say they're from Scotland and you go, oh, you must know Mabel down yeah, the road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every, everyone thinks we know everyone in Scotland. Yeah, everyone does. Not being the case, of course. Uh, yeah, any qu there are no questions so far, which okay. is great. Lots of aircrafting along. Any comments, any questions, just let us know. But until then, we'll fire across back to you, Okay. Colin. Okay, so I've stuck those mats and layers together and I've put my red liner tape down the middle so I can now turn this into my card base. So effectively all we're creating now is like a double five by seven card so you can see red liner tape is brilliant for doing that and what we've got now I'm just going against the folds just let me score that because I haven't folded it in that direction before is we've now got you can see our concertina 
card just there so all i need to do now is these two go on the inside okay. but i only want to stick down the base layer the purple i'm not sticking down my pattern paper and i'll sh because if you stick the pattern paper down it's not the end of the world but did you see how on my original one the mechanism was hidden you couldn't see i did notice that actually and that's done because we're not going to stick the next layer down yet okay so we're going to take this Intriguing. and we're going to pop this on here just there now can you see all when i do my mats and layers i try to make sure i've got straight lines so even if you're out on one so long as you're out on the same from all of them they're going to look a lot better so we should have a nice straight line running across there and it's just pleasing to the eye it's just really easy so yes. what i want to do is i'm going to bring back this piece and as you know this piece is going to go through the middle just there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my first piece of card let me make sure I've got these the right way up. No, that went from the top, didn't it? That was definitely right. So that came from the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it where it needs to go. And if you want to, just get a piece of tape and tape it down, if you find it easier, if you just think it gives you an extra hand. Okay. So I'm just going to hold that. And then what I'm going to do is I've centred that one in the middle. Okay. And what I want to do is fold, not to the first fold, to the second fold. Right. And then I'm going to take that up to the edge can you see to the edge yeah. of the pattern paper now that's too low so i'm just going to slide it up there can you see so this is when i was saying earlier it didn't matter if that wasn't yes. central so long as they all followed so i've got this up to the edge there and that into the center i'm actually going to open that up and i'm going to keep that where it was i'm going to grab my pencil and i'm just going to mark there and there i'm doing it quite bold you might want to do it a little bit lighter hopefully you can see i've done a mark just there there you can just see it and a mark just there so i'm going to take it off my uh, card base now and then you if you notice some of the things that we needed it said a craft knife and ruler yes it did. so what we're going to do is we're going to take our craft knife and our ruler and we're going to join those two points up just there okay make sure it's gone all the way through then we're going to move across it didn't matter, in one direction oh what's that an eighth of an inch right. no more and i'm going to do another one because just remember your cardstock's got some width to it mm -hmm. your cardstock isn't paper thin nope. nope so i can cut across there and across there and that will then just pop that out. So can you see, I've now got that little slit yeah. in there. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to, oh, let's put some tape, let me remember which side I need to put my tape on. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put a piece of red liner tape down there. Okay. Just because wet glue will work, but red liner tape grabs instantly. So I can put that. Just to say, if you were after the large scoreboard, it is only available in the UK now. So it is on the UK site. Uh, so just if you are out with the UK and you've been having a look, it's now only available in the UK okay. on the website. So put that one through, fold it over on that score. Can you see? Even though we measured it to the full, we just measure it. We just put that one through. Take my red liner tape off. Oops. It doesn't matter sometimes, it doesn't matter how hard you burnish. Sometimes it just oh, uh, red plays liner. up, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that lifted then and I dropped it. Let's lift that one up. There we go. So remember, I just want to fold it over and then pop that down like that. There you go. So you can see. And then wow. what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my glue on here. And I'm even going to put, make sure I put my glue on there as well. Put my glue on there. Every time I use wet glue, if you prefer to use finger lift tape or whatever, then please use mm -hmm. what works for you. Turn that over and put that, hopefully you can see, back in place. And what you've got now is you've got that piece attached, but just make sure that's burnished down. I'll lift it that way. You can't see no, you can't. any working. So I'm going to take this one through here, pop it through the middle where it needs to go in a minute and have it there. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this side. So put that onto here and then we're going to pop that and put that. Then 
Luckily, it's really, really flexible, is this? So I can do that. And because I've glued it down that side, I don't have to worry about the height. It oh. just gets a little bit more complicated to mark. So I'm just going to put a little mark just there and a little mark just there. And I can take that one out of the way. And I've got my marks there and there. OK. So I can then take that one off. So I'm doing exactly the same. It's very repetitive, this card. It looks good, but there's a lot of repeats mm -hmm. to it. So we can then just make sure that's nice and straight. Oh, red line is sticking to me. Take that one down there. And we're going to go that way. And then just there again and then we can cut across and across and look at that that should lift straight out the slither so we can bring this one let's put a little bit of red liner tape on there i don't know if this is the right way to make this car but this is how it worked when i was and, and that's the thing so we can see them isn't it and it's just yeah. trial and error on our own yeah. behalf Oh, no, I'm not going to put that. So that's going to go through there. Then I take my tape off. There you go. Otherwise, I'll get into all sorts of mischief. I've got that the right way round yet. So take that. That's going to go just there, right. I can take the red liner backing off. And at first, when I realised that the actual hinge mechanism is hidden, yeah. it was one of those good... How, you're going to have to, for me, I thought, you're going to have to measure it with your ruler. You're going to no, have to find no. what a great and easy way to actually just get that so that the, the actual hinge of it, the fold, yeah. is hidden. All hidden. And that's going to then go just there like that. There you go. Really easy. And then, let me show you. That's going to go, can you see? Awesome. Double concertina, and you can't see any of you working. Now, you could be doing your mats and layers for that at this point, but I just think it's easy. I did it before I constructed it. Mm -hmm. But can you see how we do it? Not, not the easier, you know, I mean, it, one that just takes a little bit more thinking about, but look at these panels. You could be putting all sorts on there. Favourite stamps, you know, we're doing it with the shaker tag, but how many other things have you got that you can put on there That's now the five by seven card now, this will fold up however you want so you can see it folds up look at that if you regular envelope or if you're making your own envelope box a half inch mm -hmm. one is more than enough if you just feel like you just need a little bit just while we were doing um we had some videos i've just stuck that piece of card those two pieces of card together okay so they're going to go on the front and that means that then we can get on with our shaker tags because this is supposed to be all about the shaker tags yeah, and we yeah. haven't even touched the shaker tags yet. Now, you've done a lot on the inside, so if you don't want to decorate the front, I'm guessing you don't have to decorate the front if you don't want to. No, but I, I just think it looks... It, look, it finishes it off, it does, doesn't, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? And that was that strip of purple and just a little strip, leftover strip of my orange. I've used the reverse just because I thought it looked nice. And that, oops, that's just moved, because I've moved it whilst, this is why I use wet glue. Let me just grab that. There we go. That moved while I moved, I moved it. So I'm gonna pop that back onto there. There you go, we can rescue these things. Put that on there. And then I'm going to leave that for two minutes. That hasn't moved, has it? Nope. I'm gonna leave that like that up here to dry yeah i'm glad i spotted that before i did so there we go so that is all of the card made so we need to be doing we've got one tag on the front and we've got two tags in the minute we've okay. got 45 minutes which is more than enough time to be doing those Brilliant. so let's have a look at these shaker tags now hopefully you've been lucky enough to get these before they um sold out today so these are really clever so what you've got is you've got the outside die and that's going to cut the shape and then you've got the inner die now you'll see there's no blade on this one on the outside but it is on the inside and that's going to cut the aperture now if you're doing true tags you'd cut this one out for the back and then this one out for the front but i'm doing it so that they don't have a back on so that we can see 
the card yeah. through them. So what we're going to do is I needed one star and two hearts. Okay. So I'm going to cut them all out of pink. And actually, look at these. These are some of the bits that I had left over. So oh, can, you can use them up. I can use these up. So I'm going to cut the heart. And then I'm going to cut the star. And then when I've done that, I just need to cut the outside dies out of my acetate. But I'm going to cut them double. Right. So I'm going to do them a double shake, double acetate. So let's just cut those out. So I needed two hearts. Let's just put those in together, just there. And again, like I say, just using all my little scraps up. And this is what's so brilliant about these. When these were put together, these dies, they were sized purposely for people to be able to use up mm -hmm, all yeah. of their bits of cardstock that you've got, you know. We didn't want, there, there are larger dies around for things like that, but we, these were specifically designed so that you could be using them for your little scraps. Like you say, we've done this, we've made all the card base. These are the little bits that have come out of the apertures and I'm just using them all up from here. There we go. This one is here. There we go, so I've got my star there we go look at that now please don't throw all these little pieces away that pop out the middle because you're going to be able to use those for other things as well we cut that then we're going to cut the um, heart again let's do the heart again and actually what i'm also going to do is while that's cutting i'm going to cut i've also got some smaller hearts and I'm going to take a little piece of my purple scrap let's do it from this one here a little piece of my purple scrap and I'm going to cut some of these other little hearts out there's Oops. just so many dies and, and, there and obviously is. there was um, something like 30 or something within this, the full set but it's the fact is there's shapes that you could be using without using oh, the yes. shaker concept. Exactly. And I think we all tend to, we're all guilty about forgetting but what are, are in these yeah. sets. Whether it's this or whether it, because you were showing some, um, some box it dies and they all have extra dies with them. And we always, we're always doing it and forgetting um, what dies we've got. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I'll tell you what else I need to cut out. I'm just going to cut out one of the tag elements as well. Can do that in just a minute there we go so you can see on here there we go so i've got another one of my shakers keeping the bits in the middle and then i've got some extra little hearts just there Pop imagine those. doing some of your inky backgrounds that you showed yesterday and yep. then cutting these out to create your tags oh that would be lovely wouldn't Rude, it? it really lovely okay so the other thing i just needed was a little tag i only did one of them with a tag on so i'm going to pop that through there quickly because then what i'm going to do is my acetate now i find i don't know if you agree acetate cuts much better if you use your metal shim definitely 100%. Always, yep. always. I always use my metal shim when I'm cutting through acetate. It's just the construction of it is just that little bit. It just benefits from it completely. So let's take that off from there. And I can just leave that on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my metal shim on here. I've got some acetate, but this has still got the protective film on. So I'm going to take my protective film off. Do you take your protective film off before you die cut or after you die cut? Uh, well, let me think now. No, I think I take it off before I die yeah, cut. I, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know whether people did. Yeah. I've only ever seen done it that way, but yeah, I just wondered. I'll always, yeah, take a, peel it off, then I layer it up with my yeah. dies and that, yeah. Yeah, I just, idle curiosity, can't see it now. Right, so I'm going to cut. Now, I want two pieces of acetate for each of my shaker tags. So that means I'm going to need four hearts and two stars. So let's just cut those cutting. And I'll show you how beautifully they cut by using the metal shim. When you use the metal shim, you don't have to take anything else out. It's not like an extra shim that you take something else no. out. You just add it in with your normal shim and it works really well. There we go, so we can take that. 
I hope people post pictures of, of them that, if they've made this. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Re yeah. Doesn't crack your no. acetate. Cuts beautifully. So let's go through. Yeah, anything acetate, whether it's lightweight or even if it was construction, I'm like you, Cornell, I'll always use my metal shim. Yeah. We've got it. It comes free with the machine, so mm -hmm. why not true. use it? Very true. Why not use it? I've... Now, this is where I need to make sure I don't lose um, those. Now, I found the best glue for doing this, the first bit, is tacky glue. Tacky glue is super. It's super strong. We, we know how strong tacky glue is, so why not use it? So I've got my two stars. I've only got two hearts so far, so let's take the star off and then I can cut my next two hearts out. Oops, stick it together. There we go. I'm going to get all of these out of one sheet. I could have used my smaller plates, but I had my larger plates out because I wanted them out for the card base. Where are two and two. I keep losing them on my table. They are <laughs> there, the thing, You can just it? see them. You, you can, can just, just see, see them. them, can't you? Yeah. It's like a shadow. It is. It, does, it just looks like, looks like a reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. does. But it's not. That's a real one. There we go. Cut that. Oops. And there's number three. And then there is the fourth one. Right, let's pop that through. Now, I always used to only put acetate on one side, but I found that if you put acetate on both sides of your shaker, the sequins that are inside shake a lot better. Really? Yeah. OK. Yeah, because they're shaking against plastic, not against paper. Oh, that also, makes sense. Also, I find that, as well, is you can make a shaker sandwich in advance as well and then just put the outside on True, if you need to. yeah. So there we go. So, right, I've got all my four pieces now, but I'm going to do this quick away. So I'm going to get my tacky glue and I'm going to take my tacky glue and I'm going to just pop that on there. Then I'm going to get one of my hearts and I'm going to pop that on there. Now, tacky, if tacky glue will attach um, metal to paper, it's certainly going to attach acetate mm -hmm. to cardstock without any problem. So, you know, it is an absolutely brilliant adhesive. So we can pop that onto here. I love the little faux stitches round here. I love anything with a faux stitch. All the little detail. Yeah. Really, really pretty. So we can pop that on up there. Just like that. Feels like the Emperor's New Clothes. You know when you're actually crafting with something that you can't see? Looks like, you know. <laughs> Going blind. You're, yeah. Yeah, that looks beautiful, but there's nothing there, really. But there is, I promise. I promise. So we can pop that one on it's, there. It's like you're doing the, um, you know, the, oh, what do you call it again? The, when your mind, I like your mind movement, you know, your mind acts. Uh, Miming. No, miming, that's it. Yeah, miming. <laughs> mind, mind. You were nearly there. You I were was just so, about there. You were so close. You know, when they're, like, they're in the box, funny enough. <laughs> miming. <laughs> my men making a card when there's nothing there. Yeah. I and mean, actually there is. There you go. There you go. Oh, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. We have got something there, look, honestly. And then it's about adding your tape. So I've got my foam here and I'm going to cut it into pieces. The heart is the easiest one. Now, I think these have been designed really well with our shaker foam. You would hope they have been with our shaker foam in mind, mm -hmm. with our foam on our own, because the gap between the two... Thank you, George. Thank you, George. And Jamie singing to me. There are some people... That just shouldn't gonna... sing, I know. No, I didn't right. mean that. That I'm going to say we will thank forever for certain things. Now, I'm going to... Because that's such a steep angle. I'm going to take that one off, then I'm going to... That's going to live with Ben forever, isn't it? Live with Ben? Never mind Ben. It's going to annoy me for life. <laughs> That's why everyone does it. That's why he does it. That's why Debbie Fisher does it. Love singing it, just to annoy me. Do you hate that? Oh, oh Corinne, I hate it. You hate it? Oh, I hate it. Yeah. 
It's gone way past its sell-by date. <laughs> yeah, how long, exactly, good, good point, George. How long have we been singing it? Now they just do it for fun. That's why I know this week, myself and Ben, we're back together all tomorrow. We're back together again for one show, Wednesday. We're in for most of the day together, Thursday. So I know he's just going to start singing it. Yeah. Mm hmm Right. Did you see all the way, all the way round? Can you see? That's in there. Don't worry about that. That's just the backing. And you can see, once we've done, it just hides it perfectly. Perfect fit. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I might be mistaken, Corn. I don't think I am, but I'm sure it was these shaker tags that made the product development team go and uh, re-jig our foam on a roll that you're using now. Did they? To work perfect, yeah. It's got an easier release back in, but what it is, it's to do with the depth and that that works perfectly around these. Oh, I'm right. sure it was these. Because uh, let's be honest, the last foam on a roll we had was a little bit temperamental. Oh, was it? It had a more of a gl glossy back in that sometimes was just a little bit pernicky to come off. This is more of a uh, This comes off in. really easily. Really you can easy, see yeah. where I'm curving it. It's already popping off. So we can just cover that. Now, the, as teacher grammar artist, okay, so the most important thing you have to remember with this is not to have any gaps in your foam. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is the first time somebody picks up your card, all the bits are going to come out. Doesn't matter, you can do it in multiple pieces like I've done there, so long as, you know, it obviously it joins up. The star, I tend to do in five, it is a five pointer star, yes it is. I tend to do in five pieces. Okay. Just because I find sometimes angle, the angles can be a little bit difficult. So what I would do is I would come down there and then up there and then turn it over and just trim. You can't see it. Turn it back and carry on. As long as it joins mm -hmm. up and there is no there are no gaps, then you're fine. There you go, you can see. Can you see that, that joined up perfectly? Oh, doesn't it? Perfect. And then you can pop that one on. Otherwise, I just find that that angle, that po the point of the star, is to turn it back, it gets messy. It does, doesn't it? It, it doesn't... It's clunky on the corners. Yeah, it's very... I think that's a good description, Craig. Clunky. Clunky is a good description. And we don't want clunky. We definitely don't. And then we can do on there. And then... And even doing them in separate little bits like that, it doesn't actually take too long no, to do that. I think it probably takes quicker than trying to convince the tape that, yeah, to go around right, yeah. a corner. There we go. And then the last one, as long as we put that round on here. Now, we have dies that cut out sequins, and I use those all the time for making shaker cards. OK. Because they're brilliant. They're hearts, sequins and stars. But, as you said, we have got brilliant product development team, and what they've done is, with this set, they have created sequin dies. There we Perfect. go. You can see just here. And the size of the sequins here is perfectly sized for these tags because I've put regular sequins in these and they've been a little bit big mm -hmm. again a little bit chunky so, so all them. I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some white card let's do it on here again one of the scrappy pieces and I'm just going to cut these out and I'm just doing them on white because I'm I'm going to put these straight onto the pattern paper. OK. So I don't need coloured. No, you don't. Because coloured probably wouldn't show up as well, whereas white is a, a good contrast. Oh, don't need my machine anymore. Just to say, though, while Corin was mentioning that, if you go on our website and go on to shop the day, yeah. or even if you were to go and shop the show for Craft Along, those sequence dies that you mentioned, you will find there. They're on uh, Shop the Day for today, so have a wee look. And they'll be perfect to use, but they I'm just be. saying, the dies that come in here are I've brilliant. I've got some as well, yeah. There we go. And all... I think most of the dies from today, from this shake, they'll all go through your smaller die-cutting machines. I think so, anyway, yeah. yeah. Don't see why not. So, let's take these. Oh, oh look at this. You took it... You know, we were doing our... Um, we were doing inky pads yeah. yesterday. 
How about this for stenciling? Oh, yes. Look brilliant. Yeah, now I saw a few on there, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through one more time because I've got three shakers. So I'm just going to cut these. Just being careful to get them all out of the die. Oh, one left there. Onto a piece of card, just so that I've got them all together. Just yeah. First time I sort of did this and then knocked them out of the card and then it's like, where have all my shaker where, elements where gone? Yeah, so just... But you can see straight away how the white really shows up against yeah, another colour. Because you think, oh, white... Now, the only other thing I would say is, if you are cutting them out of um, a, a, a coloured card, then think about your cardstock. So if I was to cut it out of this purple, that's great, but the back is white. Mm -hmm. And you know when you drop them down, some will fall face side up and right. some will fall reverse side up. And then you have to turn them over. So if you are looking for a good cardstock to cut them out of, I would always recommend a cardstock that is the same colour on both sides. It doesn't matter what it is. I've got some nice gold that's the same colour on both sides or, you know, or your white. As long as your cardstock has the same colour on both sides, then it works really well. Victor. I don't personally. I don't like them where because no, I, I, I then have to then flick them back over because it annoys me. Yeah, it annoys me as well. So yes. Do I get exactly what you mean by that one? The I was also thinking as well. The ones that you've just used there, it's the tiny little circles. What I'll sometimes do is I'll use gems or pearls. Now, I know a lot of guys don't mind them, like for me, but I know some guys, you maybe wouldn't necessarily do gems or pearls on some guys' cards. Mm -hmm. These are nice to use instead, the tiny little circle dots, yep. whereas yep. I've done that in the past with uh, the dots that come out of the ladybug die that we've yep. got, using them instead of a gem and a pearl. So yep. use them in those ways. Exactly right. So I think that'll do because we don't need them overly filled. And then I'm just going to show you one more tip. So the other thing I find is shaker foam, not only is it sticky on the top and the bottom, you know, you're double-sided, it's also a little bit sticky on the sides. I don't know if you ever noticed, if you ever put together a shaker and then you put everything in and all of the shaker elements stick to the side the inside, of yeah. the foam. Yeah. Frustrating, Happen, isn't it? Yeah, happens all the time, especially if you're using like um, glittery type things, you know, really lightweight. I think the lighter the weight, the more it sticks. Look at that, I've got loads of lovely bits there. So, all I'm going to do is I've got a little anti static bag and I'm just going to go round the edge of my foam with my anti static bag oh. to dust off any. Um, Sticky, just great like idea. That there we go, right? And then you know, you can always dust it down if you feel it's gone a bit too much. So, all I'm going to do now is I've got my three shaker elements, and I'm just going to let's see how easy we can do this. We're good. I haven't taken the back off my shaker foam on purpose because otherwise, I find that as I'm adding my sequins, you can find it gets a little bit you know, it attaches to right, some of yeah. the sequins. So I've left the backing on. So we can just pop some in there, just trying to share them out. And because it's white and it's white on both sides, it doesn't matter no, which doesn't. way they fall. I'm not having to spend ages turning them out. Oh, that's loads of, of um, sequins in there, isn't it? And the other little bit I'm going to use, I love chunky glitter. I think it's one of the things I've really loved since I've come over here is yeah. using my chunky glitter. I've never sort of seen it to that before. It just iridescence, isn't it? Beautiful. Now, this is why I have my second um, acetate. So we can take these off. Because that iridescence, that's going to complement the white card from exactly. the shaker, isn't it? And it's like Rhonda says, you could use tiny seed beads. Of course you could. Yep. Yep, just make sure that the, the foam you use is of a, a good, you know, the right height for whatever mm -hmm. you're putting in. Press that down, and there we now... And can you see how everything, how easy it flows? Because it's... They're sh they're, whichever way you do it, they're on acetate. It's yeah. just, just the way I've, I've started doing 
my acid, my shaker elements. So we can put that. This one's a very full one. There we go. Let's get the other one here. Although I do like a full shaker. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to shake it and then you can't see it, no. do you? There's no point. And my third one, pop that behind there. Just make sure everything is stuck down. And there we go. Look How at that. How far is that? Three little shaker rails. Now, I also could, if you remember, a little um, tag. But I only want that on one of them. So I'm going to pop that one behind the star. I'm going to take that. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue behind one of the points and I'm just you can put that on before you put your um, foam on if you want but I just like it just there and I can just leave that to dry so we're co it's really coming together it really is yeah it's amazing how quickly it comes together because they were like oh how, how long are you going to need for this and it's like how long's a piece of string so I'm going to pop those onto there you can put and not straight and I'm going to put them on at an angle so this is where you just I'm going to get my tacky glue and you can see and I'm just going to put my tacky glue on the same path as my foam because I don't want to see my tacky mm -hmm. glue so can you see it's just literally where my foam is yeah pop that just there and this one it's really an easy way to work on. It's almost like a bench to it's work like on, bench, isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Like a solid bench that you're just working against and working on. Because it looks really complicated, but as a, to construct, it really isn't. I just can't get over how easy it was to hide the little uh, folds yeah. of that inside bit. Yeah. Let's do the front one as well with the tag. Oh, I haven't put my tape up. Uh, just do that. I'm gonna, I've got some twine. Everybody's got different bits of twine. Just get some twine and just put it through your shake tag. I should have done that before I put the glue on. But I just thought it was, suddenly thought it would be easier before I stick it down. There we go. Let's just get that through there and capture the ends. There, that's it. I can trim it in a minute. And then I'm going to close the card and I'm going to pop that on the front. And can you see how pretty the papers look through? Yes, it does. We haven't hidden them at no, all. No, not at all. And then just cut that to whatever length you like. There we go. Right, so while that dries, all we've got left to do now is we've got our sentiment. We've already cut all these bits out and our sentiment on the inside. So if you just let everybody catch up for two Sounds minutes. Sounds good to me. And then I can do those bits. Sounds good because what I've got for you that would work really well for your shakers, whether it is going to be the actual outer shaker tag or the little sequins themselves, is some mirror card. Now we've got our everyday metallics. Now we do have two options for you, both exactly at the same price, but let's show you the everyday metallics here. Now, 12 by 12, 32 sheets. Now you can see here that these are 250 GSM. Now, if you look at today's price, $29.74 or $33.95, that's giving you a saving of 15%. Now, if you look at your platinum price, you're going to be $23.79 or $27.16. Now, what is absolutely beautiful and fab about these, it's a combination of mirror and matte together. So within that one there, you've got your mirror stripes, but then you've got your matte stripes that run through it as well. So they work well together. It's a lovely combination. And you can see how shiny these are with our lights just bouncing off. You've got your dots there. And then that's another way to show you how you've got the reverse. So you've got the matte background with the dots that have been printed within the silver mirror. And then within the next one, it's the silver mirror background and the dots have been printed in that silver matte forum. So it's where you're getting two sheets of each in the reverse. You know, you've got your diamonds, you've got all, I mean, look at that one there. It's like an old fashioned tile. You've got the love hearts, you've got the butterflies that you can see here, the foliage. Then we're going into the same when it comes to the gold. So it's exactly the same, whereas you've got the combination 
of the mirror and the map together. All together there you are getting your 32 sheets, 12 by 12, 250 GSM. Platinum price, 23.79 or 27.16. It is giving you on the today's price a 15% saving, but of course, if you do get hold of these today before uh, midnight your time, you're going to get your double points on them as well. That's one option. We do have another option, as I was saying before. Exactly the same price, same uh, um, deals. It's just giving you different ones. This one is all about your colours there. Also 250 GSM, 29.74, 33.95. That's where your saving of 15% comes in. But then if you add platinum, that comes down to 23.79 or 27.16. So you've got your mat against your mirror, but you've got your foliage. And then within some of these, you've got a couple of different colours together so there you've got your gold but then you've got the greens that run through when it comes to the chevron and then if we go into it furthermore you've got your mirrors here whereas you've got that kind of peachy tone in the background but then what you've got is you have got your silver that's been printed there we go look at that so you've got those ones there and then going on forward that you've got in now that one there that could be cut into panels or strips or borders you don't necessarily have to use it in the 12 by 12 within this one you actually get about four sheets of each you do have your butterflies that you can see here with that gorgeous tealy blue but then we can go on you've got your dots then you've got your love hearts that you can see and then you've got your really bold floral which has got kind of like your pinks with your gold as well. So let's tilt that that way. You're kind, of, uh, you're kind of getting the grasp of it. Let's see. There we go. You're just getting the colour tones that you can see here. All 12 by 12, as I say. So you've got your 32 sheets when it comes to that one as well. 250 GSM. Today's price, $29.74 or $33.95. That's where you're going to get your 15% saving. Platinum comes down to $23.79 or $27.16 with, up till midnight your time, your double points as well. All across on our website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.au. Take advantage of that up to 70% winter sale as well. That is there. Have a look at Peru's The Day. You'll have seen what corn's been using throughout this morning as well as up into second chance. And Sunday. Now he was back last week, he's back again with myself all day tomorrow. It is the one, the only Mr. Ben Mosby. Hello, I'm Ben and I'm one of the presenters on Crafters TV. So my presenting journey started when I was about 18. I started working at a holiday park here in the UK. Our US viewers might not know it, but there's um, like a holiday park called Butlins. So what's involved with being a presenter? Um, well, my day-to-day -day kind of is um, ensuring I know everything that's on the show, um, ensuring that the, you know, the guys that I'm working with obviously um, are happy with everything that's on the show. And I, I kind of feel like um, what I do, I'm sort of like the, the glue in the show, if you like. There's a bit of a crafty reference for you. So kind of listening to the guys in the gallery, uh, you know, the producer, the director, sort of always um, listening to what they want me to do whilst the crafters are crafting. So I feel like I'm there as the glue, keeping sort of everything, you know, as it should be. Um, but I also think my job is to, is to have a lot of fun, which I think I do on most days, get the viewers interacting, because we always love to hear from our viewers, and I think that's one thing that we do here that you don't get anywhere else is that is that interaction, having people like you know commenting, asking a question, and then straight away we're we're able to react, we're able to answer that question, we're able to you know read out that comment, we're able to join them in singing a rendition of Foam on a Roll. Yes, I've helped to run the show, I helped to inspire, to educate, to entertain, and um, just sort of generally be a good all round. Bloke. So who inspires me? My dad is a big inspiration for me. Um, he's one of my best friends and um, I, I probably speak to him twice a week, but he's um, 
he's always sort of instilled a, a sort of a good work ethic in me. Um, his, his big catchphrase is work hard and play hard. And that's something that I live by is, um, you know, to put all your effort in when you're at work and, you know, make sure you're doing a good job. But then when you're outside of work, make sure you have time to kind of have fun, spend with your friends, spend with your family. So um, I always remember that. Apart from Crafters TV, what else am I passionate about? Well, obviously I'm passionate about uh, my family. I love to spend time with my family, with my wife, my two children, uh, and my three pets now, because we've got, we've just got another dog recently, a puppy, uh, which is, uh, me. I've got no also passionate about sport. I think a lot of our viewers know I'm a big rugby fan. Running, I like to do, um, but again, the old knees <laughs> are beginning to hurt just a bit. I'm getting old. Oh, so many amazing experiences uh, connecting with our viewers. Um, always get sent cards, which is lovely on, on sort of special occasions and birthday cards every year. I always get cards sent through, which is so nice to come in and have you know some cards and um, you can send presents as well if you like. I've never had a present yet, so if anyone wants to send presents you can. Do you know what? I haven't had many presenter fails, particularly here. Actually, here, presenter fails, knocking over pack shots. I'm very bad at doing that. If you stack a pack shot too high, chances are I'm going to get exuberant in my arms and knock it over. My biggest moment of pride or biggest achievement, I've got a few. The, I mean, these are big for me. You'll probably, uh, probably laugh. Um, I, I ran the London Marathon. I was a Guinness World Record holder. I've got the certificate for that up on the wall alongside my marathon photo and alongside my foam and roll caricature. My Guinness World Record was um, for naming the most amount of Beatles songs from their opening lyrics in one minute. I've had things named after me um, over the years. Um, I had an alpaca named after me. If you are ever in Aylesbury, do make sure that you go and drive around the roundabout which is uh, near the Waterside Theatre there because you'll find that that particular roundabout is named after me. Oh yes, I have a roundabout named after me, big time. Just letting George know there that uh, Shazza lives in Torquay. Colette is saying, that is amazing. We've got Betty saying, I love watching Corinne's demo. She's so clever. I love everything she makes. Definitely going to make this one. I love it. We've got just a, well, just the one question just now, Corinne. It's actually about the acetate. Mm -hmm. Elnar is saying, which acetate has a film on it? Because I have heat resistant and heavier one. I've tried to take it off both of them, but nothing comes off. Oh, I know, it hasn't got the sheet on. It was our crafter's companion one. It comes looking like that. Mm -hmm. There will be a little slip across the bottom that ours hasn't got one in. Um, yeah, these are the ones that I would use and they are mm, eight by six-ish or maybe eight and a quarter by six inches. And this is definitely, if I show you, you can see because it looks slightly misty. It does, doesn't and it? And then if I just lift off there, you can even see it's on the back, you just, Come on, am I doing it on the wrong side now? After saying, coming across all clever, it's... Is this one being taken off? It's maybe been taken off, No, yeah. it's not. I can see no. it's there. It's on there. It is on there. No! What am I doing? What am I doing? There, I was on the wrong side. There we go. Now, you can see why, because I've scratched that side now. Yeah. There you go. It's on there. Perfect. You can see, on there like that. Excellent. It's just a little film that protects the front from getting scratched. Yeah. Well, you will find, so you'll see acetate on the screen. So that's printable acetate. So that won't have a film over it. Yeah. That's an acetate that you can actually print onto. It's got a bit of a texture. I personally, you could use it for shakers. I personally wouldn't recommend it only because it's not crystal clear because it's got a little texture to it. The heat resistant, good for colouring. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, but it's entirely up to you. But your printable that we've got on the screen there, that won't have a film on, but as uh, Corn was showing you there, like the construction heavyweight, that's got a film. Scrape the corner as Corn done. I do that as well and it'll come off. But it's saying uh, shine is always good. Shiny is always good. Going with the two layers of acetate. Colette is saying, uh, great tips, Corin. Rhonda is singing, or was singing, that foam on a roll. We've got <laughs> that Mary. That foam on a roll. <laughs> that foam on a roll. That roll on a continuously wrong circle thing. Mary Reno is saying, love these two card pads, which was going for the mirror cards. Um, and just lots of you just saying how much that you are enjoying the craft along. So anything that you have been 
say and you want to have a take a look at across, do pop on our uh, website. But we've got just about 10, 10 minutes, minutes left. So perfect I think this is going to be perfect timing. Right, now I'm using my happy birthday from my Say It With Flowers, but you could be using any sentiment. I'm cutting the matte layer out of white. I'm cutting the detail out of pink. And again, both of these were just from that scrap pile from when we cut the card base. Nothing, I haven't, in, I haven't gone into any more cardstock at all. I've literally been able to get everything, the shaker elements, the hearts that I've got, everything's come out of all of okay. those scrap pieces. So if you're careful, you can be really quite economical with your card. So I've got these from here. So this is the detail. Let's take that, and then this should pop out of here. There we go. And then we've got the, the plain matte layer. I love it when you get a matte layer, so you haven't got to See, try and work it out. Love it. Love I'm going to tap these bits off. There we go. Now, we always say, when people say to me, oh, my dies don't cut, I say it all the time, it's probably because it's user error. And one of the biggest user error with dies is that we don't clean them before no. we try to go again. So, you know, if you've got a detailed die and you think it's not cutting, is it because it's not clean? I don't know, maybe. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got this little scrap of card, and you can see it's not big enough for this die, but that's fine because all I want is the sentiment. So this is absolutely fine, and this was one of the apertures. You can see it's got rounded edges because mm -hmm. I die cut it out of the centre. Don't worry that it's not got the whole die. Mm -hmm. you, if you're only going to use part of the die cut, then only cut part of the die cut. Don't cut everything. No, no definitely. So we've got this one popping out here. That's going just there. You can see that's gone through. Just pop all those bits out. Come on, all the way. Oh, dear. It always feels like a long time, doesn't it? There we go. And take that from... There. I think this sentiment it really does complement your project that you've made. Thank you. You know, it, just look around, and I just thought, oh, it works really well. So I've got my happy and my birth birthday there, and then I've got my other sentiment. As I said, we haven't cut the whole thing out, but we don't need it. So all I'm going to do is pop that out, and then pop these bits out so this is where it's quite it's quite good to make sure you've got all the bits popped out because it actually makes it easier to see the letters so i'm going to pop that out of there oops that bit it's just struggling i'll get that bit out in a minute there we go right why did i bet you there was a piece in there that's bit, why uh, the, probably i yeah. bet you there was because everything else has cut apart from that so let's just snip that bit out of there, there we go, perfect, there we are. Right, and then all I'm going to do is, it's entirely up to you how much you do, but I'm going to try not to separate it because the one I did it at home, I actually cut too much away. So I'm going to come round here and I'm just going to cut out the happy birthday. There we go, we can cut that off there. So I'm just following the die cuts and then just cutting out those bits just cutting out the sentiment and then the A, making sure I follow the, the right sort of pattern shape and then we can come down here. Oh, I think actually I'm going to go around there and cut that bit off, so I'm going to keep that. Then with the birthday, we're going to come down here and I'm just going to make sure I do, oh, yes, I've done it again, I've cut the B off, but it's fine, we can put it back on. And then the I, the R, we want the whole of the T. Yeah, that's the H. I forgot how to spell birthday then. We're cutting round, cutting round there, and then there we go. Right, so what I'm going to do, clear away all the rubbishy bits. I just need those bits. Let's get rid of, put that to one side. And what I'm going to do is I have got my rose satin um, pigment ink just because it, it was really pretty ink. And I'm just going to dust around the edges with that, just very gently round the edges, just because it looks nicer to look be a bit really softer. Nice. There we go. And I'm also going to do it on Centura Pearl because you can ink onto Centura Pearl just because it's a coated cardstock. Don't think you can, but I'm only doing the edges because I want to still see some of the pink. And that's all I needed to do with that. Then we're going to get this bit 
and we're going to stick this on here. Actually, right, let's go with the dotty tape pen just for time. Mm, oh, that's, that's why I did. That's why I did tape because it's. Ah. There we go. I'm going to go back with the glue because I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. There would be. I thought there was a reason why I did it with the glue. I suppose because oh. you've kind of you've taken the. I've taken uh, the structure, structure away, haven't, haven't I? You? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to put that back back together. It's, all, ah, it's only a little piece that's come away, and it's there. Look. Get my tweezers. I can see it. I can see it before I tap too hard. There. I want my little tweezers. It's there. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. The little piece I broke away. Yeah, I think if it had been whole, it would have it would have taken mm -hmm. the tape pen. But because, like you say, I've cut bits away, it sort of weakened it. But no one actually is going to be able to. Probably wouldn't see. No, you won't see that at all. And then the B as well. There we go. Yeah, you forget. This is one of the things that the you know our design team when they're doing all the hard work of designing, they're, they're thinking about these things all the time, aren't they? Is how you're going to stick it down. Yep. Is it going to be robust enough? Is it going to be strong? Is it joined in all the right places? And it's possibly things that we don't think about. Nope. And then we do things like that and cut into it and then wonder why it, um, it falls apart because we've actually weakened the structure. There we we come along and do things that they hadn't initially intended it to do. Exactly. <laughs> what did I just say? It's usually user error usually is there we go so we can put that on there a little bit of glue that's going to go that way up and then we can pop that on there so i need a few foam pads let's see where's the foam pads gone on here we've got some decent sized ones oh they're all very small i think i've got some in my craft bag that might be a little bit bigger not guilty i've not been on that side for no, about a week you. or so so i had some a few minutes ago now i can't find them there we go. Oh, blimey. Right, where are they? Actually, I tell a lie. There we go. I was on wake-up call the other morning. That must, yeah, Jamie, you're right. That's <laughs> when they all went missing. All went, it all went chaos. <laughs> Foam pads arrive. Foam pads are like gold dust sometimes, aren't they, do you think? No. No? Not for me. Oh, oh no, you get... I, I don't let them be like gold dust for me. Oh, no. I get to about my last 20 packs and I'm like, all right, I need more. Yeah, yeah you had I know what you mean, though, yeah. You had a delivery of um, adhesive stuff the other day, didn't you? I did, yeah. Yes, I did indeed, boy. yeah. Lovely, um, lovely Ruth. That, I'd talk about the Sticks 2 company that are just through in Newcastle. Uh, one of the big bosses, Ruth, really good friends with Sarah. I've used them for many years. Sent me just a little parcel he, just yesterday. I did post it on my page. There we go. Right, and I'm going to pop this on. So those are just some of the hearts that we did. And then I'm going to pop these on to here. And then we can pop our sentiment on. So I've just put my heart so that they come under here. And then the last, oh, I have to tell you what I haven't done. We might not get time and I'll show you, I'll show you the finished one um, just so that you can see. We're going to put those on here just because I think we've, I think we've done pretty well we, to get through yeah, all of have, this. You have, yeah. And I'll just show you the last little thing that I would have done, but we're, I think we're going to run just out of time. Just put that one on with the foam dot. The last little, let me show you that so we can see. This is where we've got Love to. Love it. There we go. You can see the card shape. Let me come across there so you can see. Decorate the back if you want, but that could be a good place to write your message. There we go. And the last little bit I did with this one was from the Dragonfly Dreams. I just took the sentiment especially for you oh, that and it comes from there and it also has a die to cut it out and i've just popped that on and that's all i've done to this one that we've not done today so there we go there we are so let's turn that round so that you can see it there you go and that just gives us perfect time to wrap up any comments before we go for the ready before the next show that is absolutely fab. I know those of you that uh, haven't been crafting along are eager to actually start crafting along. Like many of you do, you'll wait until after it's live so you can go back and pause and reverse, as we can see within the comments here. That's not it for today. We've still got, if you're watching live, 
in about two hours' time, you're going to find myself in Corin again. Once again, we are here with our Second Chance Sunday. We're going to be having a look at some of the best products and some of the best deals that we've had from the past week. We are also going to be doing demo of the week, of course, but then what we will also do at the same time as well, we'll have a look, see where, um, what grab bags and mystery bags were left from uh, Cartload the other day. We've got a few just hanging in there. One, how it's still hanging in, I never, never know. Couldn't tell you why it is, but it is, and that's going to benefit all of you that are watching on this Sunday. So we're going to have a look at that, and as I say, many other things as well. Uh, Corn, a lot of love for what you've been doing today. That was absolutely fab. Many I know will be adding that to the playlist. Um, but we're going to not quite do a craft along again, but we'll come back and we'll do Second Chance Sunday. We will. We Sounds will. Good. Second Chance Sunday in a little while. We will do it indeed. Uh, so that's going to be 6 o'clock here in the UK, 1pm Eastern Time, 10am Pacific Time, where we'll have that Second Chance Sunday. Do have a look on our website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. You can either go to shop the show, but as I would always recommend, going to shop the day, you'll find everything from our masterclass early, our craft along, and of course our Second Chance Sunday later on. While you're there, take advantage of that up to 70% winter or sale that's going on up until the 2nd of January or while stocks last that is currently there and then what you can also do as well is if all of that's not enough you could take advantage of your double points which ends midnight your time tonight so wherever you are across the globe it's going to end midnight started yesterday but today is the final day. So while we go and uh, freshen up and we go and see what we've still got in stock for Second Chance Sunday, if you are watching live, we will watch you and see you in a couple of hours' time. Bye. <laughs>